minute. Check one, check two. What's up, ladies and gents, and welcome back to another episode of the Birdie Num Num Podcast. Sanjay Mangatali here, having a good week, and I really hope you all are having a wonderful week. And today on the podcast, we're going to keep it going. As you can tell from the title, I wanted to talk about what kind of analytics, what kind of data, what kind of business intelligence, BI, data science, uh, data questions, decision-making support systems, what kind of analytics would Tinder or any dating app have for that matter? Which is an interesting question. You know, I used to work in analytics at Accenture for many years, and I learned a lot about data, which I thought was so boring initially when I started. But then earlier, as I was thinking about it, I was like, wow, that was like the best career move that they put me in because, I mean, the future is data. You know, I remember reading a, a thing in a book a long time ago, and they were like, you know, in the future, uh, information about transactions is going to be more important than, than the transactions themselves, which if you think about it, kind of means like, So you bought an iPhone, big deal, you know, like, but 500 men in Tennessee above 40 bought an iPhone the day after Christmas, like that's interesting, right? So when you take all those transactions and you kind of summarize them up, then you can figure out, okay, where do we spend our advertising budget or, okay, that's interesting. Nobody would have ever predicted the fact that, you know, after COVID used car prices would go up or after COVID birth control would go up or whatever, right? So there's all sorts of cool things, uh, you know, that we see in society every day when it comes time to data. And so I thought since a lot of times whenever I talk about dating, a lot of you respond really well. And I love getting those messages and questions. And, you know, I'm married now, but I always like talking about it because when I wasn't married, I would talk about it as well. So let's get straight into it, shall we? So when it comes to data, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, maybe they don't realize it, even though they do it. Like if you think about like an Excel spreadsheet, a database usually is nothing more, uh, you know, than a much fancier version of a spreadsheet. You know, there's rows and there's columns and there's, you know, in analytics, there was something I remember, I don't know if it's changed, but I remember it was called like dimensions and facts, right? So it's like dimensions, if you think about it, are like, you know, what dimensions are we analyzing this on? So are we, a dimension is going to be like, categories, if you will, or attributes like, uh, you know, uh, gender may be a dimension, right? Or age may be a dimension or month may be a dimension or product, you know, iPhone, iPod, MacBook, that may be a dimension with product being the category. And then the different values in those things would be MacBook and iPhone and whatnot. So Like, and then there's things called facts when it comes time to understanding the data, which is dimensions by themselves, they have no value. They're just categories like iPhone or MacBook. But then facts might be, you know, the cost or revenue or profit based by product or profit based by category. Um, And so when you look at that information together, you get real insights, right? It's like, um, okay, which are our top selling products, you know? Uh, a dimension might be the product. Okay, so MacBook. And then another dimension might be location. So you'd be like, all right, our top selling product in California is the MacBook, but our top selling product in New York is the iPhone, right? We do more. So we should probably advertise more for iPhones in New York and more for MacBooks in California, which may make sense because it's Silicon Valley or creative people in Hollywood or whatever, right? So example, right? So I started to think, you know, like, it's interesting. I remember reading about Tinder because I was trying to get the Tinder India CEO on the podcast, but I think she was sick or uh, I think she was having, a, I don't know, it was just some personal stuff that she was going through. Um, and then I remember kind of studying about it and I read something that Tinder had a score, you know, where it's like uh, they would look at each user internally. They would never tell you the score the way Uber gives you a score as a customer, but they were able to determine not based on like, it's subjective, right? Beauty, like if you're blonde and tall or if you're short and petite or, you know, big and big and short or whatever it is, whatever some people think defines beauty, like the computer can't figure that out, but the computer can figure out, you know, how many people are messaging you, how many people spend, how much time do people spend on your profile, um, you know, that sort of stuff. And so the computer can get an idea of, you know, how many matches do people swipe yes on you versus maybe you swipe yes on them. Maybe that means you're competitive. So they give you a score. They get all that data and they kind of give you a score of how good is your profile. And, you know, Facebook advertising would do the same thing based on how many people, if you show your ad and spend a thousand dollars or a thousand or 50,000 rupees or whatever on your ad, based on how many people stop their thumb when they see your ad and then how many people actually click the ad and how many people actually buy your product, that would give your ad a score, right? So if your ad wasn't wasn't even, you may have the best product ever, like you may be the best person ever, you know, um, but if your ad is not getting a 
uh, a click on the thing, then no one is going to buy it, right? So, so no matter how amazing you are as a person, if you think about a person as an advertisement, which is a cool analogy I was thinking about on the fly, um, no one is going to care. Like no one's going to read the book if the cover, unfortunately, doesn't grab their attention and they don't open it and they don't buy it. Because in the world we live in, as I've talked about over and over again, nobody is going to pay attention, right? So attention is so scarce right now. It's like the biggest... Uh, it's like the most scarce commodity I personally feel because most people get their attention hijacked and they don't even realize it. Okay. So thinking about all of that, like I was just, you know, I've got, I'm sure we all have friends who, you know, complain about being single or have had a hard time meeting people or been in bad relationships and whatnot. We've all been there. I've been there. I totally get it. But I'm sure we all have that one friend uh, who no matter what, they will never pay like for the dating apps. Like it was hard enough to get them on the dating apps. And then once they're on it, they will refuse to spend that $1, $5, you know, for coffee beans or extra super Tinder or super Bumble or whatever it is to make it easier to message people or to make it easier, um, you know, to get a match or to just save time. Right. And I find that like crazy, like not maybe not crazy because we've all been there, but I find it so ridiculous now because we are way beyond that in terms in terms of society. Right. Like there was a time where it may have been embarrassing to say that you're online dating um, or it may have been embarrassing to say that you want to meet somebody. But like, get over it, dude. Like how long? Like when you sit there pretending like people care that you, like you're going to say you're single and you're lonely and you want to meet somebody. um, like nobody cares. And then you're just going to wake up one day and realize you were trying to impress nobody because nobody was around, right? Like I signed up for online. My wife makes fun of me all the time. But like, dude, when I was like 22, and keep in mind, that was a long time ago when I was like 22 and it wasn't even apps, it was websites. I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot because I started to think like, man, I'm like spending half my salary every month going, I mean, you know, when you're 21, 22, you barely make anything. But I was like, I'm spending half my salary on rent. I'm spending like a good half of the other half, or like a quarter of it on like spending $9 at that time or $15 now to get like a drink at a bar with people I don't even care about or with this like off chance, like Mrs. Wright is going to like walk in randomly one day um, at a bar. And, you know, when people pretend like they don't want to pay a dollar or $5, I don't buy that because you're basically paying a premium whenever you go to a bar or a restaurant and you think like, okay, um, you know, this is magically going to happen. So I find it so ridiculous now. I'm not trying to attack anyone. It's just like, dude, your time is valuable. Your time is money. So, you know, like put in that effort and, you know, these apps have a lot more kind of marginal value, if you will, if you just spend that dollar, like think about it, think about how much, and we all have that friend, by the way, who will constantly have their phone saying no more storage, no more storage, no more storage. And it costs like a dollar or like $5 a month to have like all the storage you would ever want and you would ever need, yet they won't do it. But then that same person will spend like hundreds of dollars on a bunch of BS or drinks on people at bars or whatever. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? Spend the $3 and make your life 10 times easier and save yourself so much hassle, right? So people do the same thing with the dating apps. And so, you know, whether or not that's you, that's fine. But let's try to understand, I personally think, because, you know, data drives everything. I'm not saying look at dates like, analytics and like, oh, what should I wear? Because red shirts work better than blue shirts and blah, blah, blah. Don't do all that. Some people I'm sure will. But like, I was just curious. I just wanted to think out loud, right? So if you think about Tinder, for example, like, okay, or any dating app, you match with somebody and, uh, you know, you send messages back and forth and eventually you exchange numbers. And then maybe, you know, from there it's, it's in your guys' hand, right? So, um, number one, I thought probably, you know, one simple metric or one simple kind of thing people would look at is like average time on profile, right? So if somebody is swiping on you, think about it, you do it, right? When somebody catches your attention, what do you do? You obviously tap on their photo, right? So that's probably something they record, a, a photo tap to actually go into the profile. Then you probably swipe. So if they have uh, five photos, you probably look at, do you look at all five? Do you look at three out of five? Do you look at one out of five? Do you only look at one? Do you not swipe at all? So, you know, you might think average time on profile is one thing. 
Uh, you might think drill, drilling down, which is like going into details or kind of like, I mean, pinching is what you might think on the phone, but drilling down, meaning you go from the top level profile to like five pictures underneath, that might be another. So how many of their pictures, um, how many of your pictures are they viewing, right? Um, do they even get to your last picture? Like I remember when I was, when I was on Tinder years ago, like they would tell you, um, you know, this is your best performing photo. So maybe move this one to the front. So maybe you get more matches. Why they do that? All right. Because obviously you may have had five photos. You may have had a picture of you, you know, probably ladies that would have like a picture in like an office outfit and then like one at the beach and like a bikini. And then I'm sure all the guys would go look at that one. Right. And then so naturally they would think, well, they spend four seconds on her main photo. Then they swipe to her third photo and then they spend like 30 seconds, right. Doing whatever guys do. So it's like, you know, these are the kind of things people record. And again, for one of my last podcast episodes, why do they do that? Because there is some value in that, in understanding these sorts of things, right? So average time on profile, average number of pictures, uh, you know, per profile. And then those things by itself, okay, the average person has three or the average person gets, you know, 30 seconds on their profile for women and maybe six seconds on their profile for guys. But then when you start to look at those and kind of slice and dice them across different maybe rows or, you know, kind of different dimensions, then it becomes interesting, right? So like, what's the average time on profile for people in California versus people outside of California or India versus America or by age, right? Do people that are above 30 uh, who are matching with other people above 30, do they spend way more time um you know, looking at profiles or do they spend less time? Like I'm sure like teenagers, for example, or like 19 year olds or 21 year olds, teenagers, that sounded weird, but people, in the, you know, young adults, like they probably swipe a lot faster because there's a lot more people, right? So another thing that kind of caught my attention, when I was thinking about this was, you know, a lot of people I'm sure, dude, like matching is like half the battle. Um, but then once you actually match, and you know, my wife and I, we met online and then she ignored me. And then it wasn't until later we met in person. We had like 50 mutual friends, but then like, it was like, okay, that's how we met or whatever. I mean, I might even message her on Facebook. I don't even know, <laughs> but like, that's kind of, that was kind of our story, right? Where it's like, for some reason she was on there and then she never responded to my message. And then it wasn't until later that we kind of crossed paths. But I'm sure a lot of guys and girls, like they will be swiping and they'll have a conversation for like one, two, three messages, and then it'll go nowhere. And another thing that got me thinking is like, this This might be more advanced, but I'm sure they have a way to figure it out because these days, these companies know so much about you that they don't even tell you, where it's like, what's the average number of messages before people exchange phone numbers? Like that has to be something they record. And that has to be something that might be interesting to you, right? Like, do you drag it out until the other person kind of gets bored and they're over and there's no mystery? Or do you just kind of give enough without coming up, coming across too forward? And it's like, after like 15, 20 messages, it's like, Hey, well, you know, I got to go or I got to get, get to work, but you know, here's my WhatsApp, you know, let's stay in touch or let's make a plan, you know, because one thing, this is not about Tinder, but one thing guys do, I, I've noticed in India, but I'm sure guys everywhere, it's like, they're too aggressive or they're too available. It's like, well, but what about next week? What about next week? But Unfortunately, don't don't be like totally aloof, but pretend like, you know, even if you have nothing to do, don't be way too eager to meet. Be like, hey, do you want to meet up this Friday? And if the person's like, oh, I can't this Friday, then you can be like, all right. And you got to wait a week. You got to wait two weeks. And you can be like, all right, well, I'm free, you know, next week. Let me know if you're interested. And if you follow up next week and then the person makes another excuse, you got to write that one off. All right. Don't be so, partic so persistent. Um, you know, you can kind of lightly do these things, but some people, they like, there, you know, there's like a saying in photography, like light kind of uh, gets less intense the further out you go. So like um, if you're five feet away and then you move 10 feet away, maybe the light will drop by 50%, right? Because you went double the distance, like so the light that's falling on your face. But now if you go double that distance, it's not like the light's going to proportionally fall off another 50%. Like the light will actually fall off way more because ultimately there's kind of this like exponential curve. I think somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but guys kind of do the opposite where the the kind of more like they'll try to come off like less creepy but then as it gets closer and closer to disappearing they come off more and more and more creepy it's like do you want to meet do you want to meet do you want to meet from like one message a week to like one message every three days to one every five minutes right so i think people do, i've never done it but i feel like enough of my female friends have told me those things happen so um have i done it oh god i hope not <laughs> but uh 
you know, so obviously there is things like, uh, you know, time on profile, number of photos taken, how many uh, messages till people exchange numbers, right? Um, you know, what other kind of analytics would, uh, and you know, these things all make a score, right, about your profile. There's, and I guarantee you, you know, speaking of, of pictures, let's be honest, dude, dating apps are a very visual medium, okay? I know that people are trying to do, you know, I had an idea for a dating app a long time ago. I never made it. Somebody, if you do, feel free to give me some royalties. Um, but it was like, what if there was a dating app where like the photo was like blurry, you know, like you couldn't see the person or you could just kind of get like an outline or like a silhouette that would be super easy with some like filter, you know, to do. And then the more kind of things you have in common or the more questions you kind of answer about each other, kind of like a love is blind sort of virtual thing, the photo kind of like gets revealed, right? And anywhere along the way, you know, somebody could kind of disable it or, or decide they're not interested or whatnot. But, you know, it's kind of a way to kind of remove that kind of visual only thing. Because let's be honest, dude, when you're swiping so fast initially and, you know, and that brings me to another point. Obviously, it's a very it's a very uh, visual medium, and you know, although some people do meet through their work or through and look when you meet somebody at work, have you ever like been in school or worked with somebody and they're just so like they weren't even that attractive to you, but then after years of getting to know them, they're like super attractive to you. Well, that's obviously a thing that happens, but you're not going to see that with dating apps, right? So these visual things like are hugely important, whether you believe it or not. And so I'm sure they're recording, you know, who are the people uh, in your photos, right? A lot of people do this where they'll have like a picture of them, but for whatever reason, they're insecure or they're not sure, you know, about, about themselves or whatever. Then they'll have a picture of like 10 of their other female friends or 10 of their other guy friends. And let's be honest, dude, maybe some of them are also very attractive, right? So even if that person is attractive, why are you kind of highlighting these other people where A, it's confusing to know which one are you? And then B, it's like, oh, you know, this is cool, but like, okay, look at all these other people. I I'm sorry to say, but that's how these apps work, dude. And, and it's so funny right now because everyone is so scared about like being polite or like being politically correct, but you know where people aren't politically correct? It's uh, on the apps because let's be honest, dude, people swipe by race. Okay. They swipe by gender. They swipe by, um, you know, uh, ethnicity or whatever. I know they're probably the same or whatever. Um, they probably swipe by name. If people are religious, they probably swipe by age. I'm sure if somebody looks old or looks young, they probably swipe by body type, even though there's all that posit body positivity stuff. So it's like, Obviously you do you, everyone's beautiful. Everyone's got their own stuff going on, but you know, when people pretend like they're so kind of, uh, truthful about what they want and looks don't matter, but then on their swipes, it's very clearly a very looks based decision. Um, then you kind of got, you kind of got to know that going in and find ways to make that work to your benefit or, or play within that. Right. So Another thing that they might do with Tinder, for example, if like the photos aren't your strong suit or you're just not good at it or you don't want to put in the time, which why would you not? Because we have we all have friends, right, who will swipe hundreds of thousands of people for years and years and years when it may just take one day of sitting down for 30 minutes, figuring out their profile properly, putting the right pictures, writing the right information, and then their swipe rate is going to go up like a lot, right? Average analytic I probably thought about right now would be percentage of matches, right? Like how many people swipe on you versus how many, how many people uh, you swipe on and like what the kind of match percentage is there, like how competitive are you, if you will, right? Um, other things I bet they probably do in Tinder is like tag clouds or like text clouds of like, what are the most common things that seem desirable in people's text information, right? So like if somebody writes traveling or photography or comedy or movies or acting or poetry or art or drinking or bars or whatever, right? Hell, they probably even look at like when people exchange messages, you know, what works better, writing the word drink, writing the word coffee, you know what I mean? So like, these are all things that that people think about. And I'm not saying you got to, obviously a lot of this is organic when you meet somebody, you got to have that kind of chemistry and you got to kind of go with it. But it was just interesting to me and I was thinking about this because I was like, dude, what kind of, and like if I was working there, you know, what kind of business intelligence would these people have, Right. Um, let's see, time on profile by race. I guarantee you that's something that whether or not a big company can actually look at it, I'm sure the algorithms know because dude, 
there was there's a website in America, and I'm sure it's everywhere called uh, OK Cupid, and that's by these like MIT dudes, and they had a fantastic, you know, they were numbers based, analytics based. They had an awesome study that they did on their website where they were looking at who are the most desirable and least desirable. Um, by race. And they weren't trying to attack anybody. They were strictly looking at the numbers because they had race, you know, as one of their data points. And it was fascinating, dude. You know, there was like, I think African American women and Asian men usually were the ones most confined to, not confined, but usually they were the ones who often dated the most within their race. Whereas like a tall white guy, I don't know why I added tall, but like, you know, like a white dude or like an Asian girl, for example, based on their study were the most that had kind of cross dating, like white guys dated almost every race. And then Asian women, um, you know, dated white guys and Asian guys and maybe Indian guys, who knows? And I think like right above Asian guys, who like had it the worst was like Indian dudes. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> that's rough. Like that was a study that they had in, I, I don't know, maybe the Indian guys was part of Asian, I'm not sure, but that was a study that they did. And this is what happens, dude. And like, I mean, it happens, right? Like, let's be honest. So kind of knowing these things, um, you know, as as people go about their days and, and their lives, I think is super interesting. Uh, so time on profile by race, number of messages before meeting up. How about number of messages before getting blocked, you know, like, or what's the frequency or the ratio of messages from guy to girl or girl to guy, or, you know, is there a correlation between the first person who sends the message and, you know, meeting up or dating, right? Um, you know, these are all kind of, uh, fascinating data points, I think. Uh, and yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of some of the stuff that I was thinking about, if there was anybody else who may have had like an idea or something interesting to say about this, please let me know. I just find it fascinating because dating is, it's tough, right? And it's, it's going to be virtual for a while. You know, I mean, it's here to stay, right? The apps and things. And I think I was in a comedy show and I was like, there was, there was a, a here in Memphis and there was a, a group and I was like, how'd you guys meet? And they're like, oh, we met on Tinder. And I was like, oh, thank God. That's, that's like normal. Right. Like, and then somebody else was like, well, we, we met at a bar and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. Like who meets, a, <laughs> who meets in real life anymore first? You know, you, you got to kind of understand the person, analyze the person beforehand. So, um, hope that made sense guys. You know, we do talk about dating on this podcast quite a bit. So, you know, flex those creative muscles in your love life, you know, kind of stand out from the crowd. Uh, look at the numbers, but don't be kind of driven by the numbers. But just remember, these are all things that, that make a difference and people do. I told you in the last uh, podcast, you know, Hollywood movies and, you know, major websites like Shopify and all these things do A-B testing where, you know, even like it's called conversion rate optimization, like even the color of a button will determine, can we get 10 more emails out of every 100 visitors based on the color of the button or the type of font we use? And, you know, some people they don't realize the obvious as well. You know, there's that thing like the emperor has no clothes. I remember when we were doing our wedding invites, like we had like a designer and it was like so cool and so clever and whatever. And the font was like super calligraphy and like all that super elegant. But I was like, dude, like, you know, somebody getting this can't even read it unless they like really pinch into like the invite or the WhatsApp image. Um, and so I, I get that it's beautiful, but it may not be practical. Right. So, you know, even a lot of these websites, they may have like a button or a font in white, but you may not be able to read white. And so you may have a picture of you, you know, super awesome $500 sunglasses on your profile at the beach, but you may not even be able to see your face. Right. Or you may say something clever, but you never even mention what it is you do for work in your profile, even though you had like a cool, funny poem about getting drunk or whatever. So like, these are the kind of things you should think about. Um, it was fun for me because I kind of came from an analytics background before I kind of did all this other comedy stuff. So hope that made sense, you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback or any thoughts, and I will see you guys next week. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. A birdie num num.